speech and debate, we all make a commitment to compete. Now, at this tournament, I had signed up for several speeches. I didn't really want to compete in them, so I tried to drop a couple of them. However, I was told that you made that commitment. You have to honor that commitment, and that's really what we're looking at in policies. I had to compete. I honored that commitment. The U.S. made a commitment to this treaty. We all said that we were going to ratify it. We did ratify it. We said we were going to obey with it. We spent at months and months and months actually writing the text of the treaty. We signed it, and now a month and a half later, on the, the affirmative plan, you have us backing out. It's absolutely is not the way foreign policy works, nor is it the way the U.S. acts in the world. Uh, so let's just go down and look at all the arguments. And the first argument that we ran um, was talking about how missile defense is actually not legally hindered based on the text of the treaty. Not only that, but we're continuing talks with Russia about really what is acceptable. The response is, is the government really wanted to pass, so they'll say anything they want. Their second, um, and their second response, I didn't really quite get it, but they're saying we never addressed their actual evidence. I have a couple responses to this. My first response is that there's no legal agreement in the text that specifically hinders missile defense. There is nothing in there. We agreed to the treaty. When we were writing the treaty, we said everything works out. This is good for us. We agree with you. You agree with us. And that's what happened. Russia came out and said, well, we believe it should be um, 100 missile defense. We don't like you doing that. We said, well, it's actually in the treaty. They never responded to that. My second response is we're already having talks. We're continuing to talk with Russia about what this actually restricts. My third response is that international stability outweighs. Once you go into a treaty, you do not back out, especially a treaty of this caliber, and especially of any caliber, you don't back out a month and a half later when nothing has happened since you've ratified it. International stability outweighs, and they actually cooperate with other countries completely outweighs this point. Um, our next argument was talking about how uh, there is actually no extraordinary circumstances or actual um, legitimate reason for backing out of the treaty because of the actual text. Their response is, is that the U.S. decides when extraordinary events happen whenever it wants, and the negative team can't decide this. Well, one, they're the affirmative team. They're deciding what's occurred. They're deciding when we back out. So there's no reason to say that we can't decide this. Their second response to this was talking about the ABM treaty. I'm respond to that. But first, I'm going to respond to the other ones. My first is at the deciding, the opposite side. My second response is, is that before we passed it, nothing has changed. We said this works for the U.S. We agree with everything. We are looking at the current situation. We're saying we'd like to do this. Okay, so Obama passed it. Congress ratified it. That's what happened. We say a month and a half later, we're saying, well, actually, we decided that we didn't really look at the situation enough, and we decided that there are actually some extraordinary circumstances that warrant our rule. That's not how foreign policy works. It's not how the U.S. works. My second response is about their ABM treaty. One, the ABM treaty is not even close to the caliber that the New START treaty is. The New START treaty was negotiated for months. It received praise from nearly every country in the world. Russia encouraged us to ratify it several times. In fact, Dmitry Medvedev even patted Obama on the back and gave him a hug when he ratified it. This is a very important treaty. It's very important to Russia. It's very important to the world. It's very important to the US. Obama has staked a lot of his political capital, a lot of his agenda on this treaty as we read evidence. My second response to this is that it was decades after we pulled out of the ABM treaty. We're pulling out a month and a half from the New START treaty. That's not how it works. Uh, my third response is, is actually Russia back out of START too because we withdrew from the START treaty. This comes from Wade Bowes, and he wrote in 2002 that quote, responding to the U.S. withdrawal from the anti-ballistic missile ABM treaty the previous day, Russia declared on June 14th that it would no longer be bound by the START II treaty nuclear arms reduction agreement. So really, I asked them in cross-examination, they said, were there three START treaties? They said the second one really not got off the ground. Why did it not get off the ground? Because we backed out of the ABM treaty. Russia did respond, they didn't cooperate with us. Historical precedent proves that backing out of treaty is not smart. My fourth response is, is that my partner in evidence said that Europe, Europe was mad because we backed out of the treaty. They question our consistency with our word. Um, our other arguments, we're talking about verification and how it actually helps um, um, U.S. national security. Their response is that we're not actually verifying anything. It's not as good as the first start treaty. Well, the point is, according to our evidence, according to our PhDs, it helps national security in the long run by keeping tabs on Russia and their nuclear weapons. This is a smart policy. We agreed to it. We thought it was smart. That's why we ratified it. And then this comes to our disadvantage, and these are very, very, very important. The first disadvantage is the U.S. verifying bond. I've already addressed that. The second disadvantage is that of international repercussions. This is incredibly logical, incredibly important in today's debate realm. The impacts to this, withdrawing from the treaty, one, everyone is mad at us. Two, this legitimizes similar action. Three, this delegitimizes the U.S. Now, the really points here are saying, because it legitimizes similar action, we withdraw from a treaty, this nation withdraws from the treaty, so other nations do. Two, we kept our word, we're backing out of it. Why does this matter? 
because it's our cooperation lost. Russia's been publicly cooperating with Iran. We offend them. They cooperate with Iran more, hurting us in the long run. Two, everyone is mad at us. This is not how the U.S. operates, and it's not how we should be operating with our policies. Thank you. Thank you very much.